Good evening, everyone. It's good to see you on this beautiful, beautiful day. Amen. Alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Amen. Brother Tompkins, good to see you. Brother Mrs. Brown, good to see you. Brother Tony's good to see you. Amen. Let's all stand, please. And we're going to go to number 245. The old account was settled. 245. And Brother Luke's going to come and lead us. Page 245. We'll sing the first, third, and last. you glad you're saved? Amen. Amen. Uh, don't, don't forget, tomorrow is uh, the statewide how, um, day of prayer, fasting, and humiliation. I read the, uh, the uh, um, article from the, our state house of representatives, and so uh, I encourage uh, our church to, to let's, uh, let's participate in that. Let's be, be in prayer for our country, for our state uh, tomorrow. Uh, we have a lot of other Christians around the state that are uh, going to be praying with us, and so uh, let's rally around and just pray for our country. It's uh, very important. Also, um, uh, Brother Green, uh, he is pastor of Parker Memorial Baptist Church, and I've, for the last 25 uh, weeks, been a part of their uh, prayer call. He has a uh, weekly prayer call. It did. It was every day for a while, and then they went to three days a week. And then um, towards the end of this, of this month, we're going to go back to every day, and for 40 days between then and the election, you know, take the election and go back 40 days. We'll be praying every day, and, and there will be a, a team of pastors around the, the state fasting and praying. And uh, if you want to uh, join us, uh, the day of my team is on Thursday. If you want to listen in on the, on the phone calls, on the, the prayer call, you don't have to say anything. You don't ha even have to announce yourself, but you can, you can be there with us. It's at 7 in the morning. Um, on, on Thursday is when, when my, team, uh, my team and some pastors in the area will be praying. So if you want to join us, uh, you can do that, and we'll be doing that until the election. So uh, I just uh, want to encourage everybody, let's, we've got we've to pray. We've got to pray. Only God can, only God can uh, intervene and, uh, and affect change. So amen. It's good to see, good to see everybody. Glad, to, glad to know the Lord kept you safe and brought you back uh, this evening. So let's open up with, with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for this chance that you've given us to come to church. And I pray, Lord, that you please meet with us this evening, Lord. I, I know uh, we all need to hear from you. I ask that you please uh, send your Holy Spirit to uh, come down and speak to our hearts and to prepare our hearts for what you have uh, for us from your word. Bless the service. Lord, bless each heart. Those who were not able to make it, I pray, the Lord, that you please uh, feed them. Uh, Lord, give them a special uh, something from you tonight. I pray, Lord, that you please be with those who are sick, those who weren't able to make it. Lord, that you would please give them a, a, your healing hand. I pray that you'd please uh, bond us together, Lord, as a family. I pray that you'd please help us as a church. 
Lord, to, to uh, always look to you and always keep our eyes on you. And Lord, to, to follow you as faithfully as we can. Lord, please bless our time together tonight. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As you're seated, take your hymn books, turn to page 327. We're saying Higher Ground, page 327. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on high. announcements this, this evening. Don't forget we have our missions conference coming up a week from Monday. Can you believe it? Seems like I've been announcing this like for three months, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, October 4th through the 7th, we'll have uh, Brother Saramac, and I heard today that they will be bringing their entire family, so newborn baby and, uh, and four, kid, and four uh, boys and plus mom and dad, so that's going to be a lot of fun, and they'll be uh, staying in a, a, a camper here on here on property. They have Brother Shoof, and he will be with us with his children, and then Brother Mrs. Fulton, they'll always be with, with us. Also, uh, the ladies' tea, Monday, October 5th, is at noon, so please, ladies, uh, be sure to sign up if you uh, want to participate. And men, at 7 o'clock, big boy in Chelsea, you, uh, please uh, feel free to Come and join us. Uh, we're going to have um, Brother Saramac and Brother Shoof with, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I think all three of them. I think all three of them, yes. So we'll have all three missionaries with us that morning. And so um, we're going to have Brother uh, Shoof. He's going to actually uh, talk to us on Monday morning and tell us some, some of the things that's been going on over in Uganda and, and how he's had to change mission fields. So that'll be interesting. Also, this evening, uh, don't forget, uh, we're going to be having a special time with the Leonard family and Afterglow after the evening service. So, uh, and also we want to take up a, a nice love offering for them. So uh, please, if you want to participate, I encourage you to do so. We want to let them know how much we appreciate them and love them. And also, uh, October 30th, we are having a chili cook-off. Uh, so please sign up and, uh, let, and, um, and if, get, your, get your chili recipe out and let's get ready to have a fun time. And um, October 31st is time change. Uh, November 8th, be telling your, your friends and coworkers and neighbors about our friend day. We're having a pizza party that day and uh, a, a church-wide pizza party. So uh, make sure that you uh, are talking about it and, and telling your friends and letting them know that we're just gonna have a good, good time that day. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board about the winter wonderland for the, for the ladies. And also, um, there is a sign-up sheet for the Fresh Oil Conference. The, uh, the Fresh Oil Conference is, uh, from my understanding, is for everyone, and, uh, but the Winter Wonderland is for the ladies, so just uh, keep that in mind. All right? All right. We've got a few prayer requests. If you have a prayer request and you want us to pray for it, just uh, if you could, just a second. Give me just a second, and uh, then let me know. I will write it down. But we've been praying for Daryl Jr., uh, the pastor's uh, son. We've been praying for Troy Harris. We've been praying for Sarah Ramon's uncle Larry and her cousin Chris, Michael Moody's dad Joe. We've been pray praying for uh, Mrs. Enos' uh, brother Lanny. And also we've been praying for this baby Capri, Miss Carolyn Blau. Um, be in prayer for uh, Dwayne Binkley. 
Dwayne Binkley, who's okay. Okay. So Dwayne Binkley, he's uh, he has cancer. The doctors have recommended hospice. So if you would be in, in prayer for Dwayne Binkley, and then um, Hun, do you know any update on uh, Laura's situation? All right, so just keep, continue praying for uh, Laura Osborne um, and her health issues. Also, uh, J, uh, Brother and Mrs. Lantis, be in prayer for their health. Uh, Brother Tompkins and his uh, post-polio syndrome, the Lord has been helping him, but uh, we'll continue praying for him. And uh, Christy Moody uh, and her, her job situation. Um, uh, Bill Cristobal, uh, Miss uh, Nancy and Miss Patty's brother who has cancer. Uh, we've, we've also been praying for Brother Tony's uh, men's Bible class. Uh, be in prayer about that. And then Linda, Kathy Johansson's sister, fell and broke her hip in three places. So if you would, be in prayer for her. Um, also, um, Tony, Brother Tony, what is uh, your mom's name? Judy. Judy. Right, be in prayer for uh, Judy, Brother Tony's mom. Uh, she is in the hospital. Can you, can you give us a... a And, and something that the hospitals are restricting is the amount of visitors. They can only have one visitor per day. So you, it's like you have to pick who's going to visit them, and they have to stay with them 24 hours. You can't have multiple people. So it's been a, it's been a challenge uh, for them. So does anybody else have a prayer request that they would like to mention before we go to prayer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's Lanny, correct? Okay. Sorry if I ask questions I should know. I don't know how many brothers you have, so I'm just making sure it's the right one. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We'll keep praying. Keep praying. All right. Anybody else have a prayer request? Okay. Uh, be in prayer for the uh, missions conference coming up uh, a little over a week. We've got a, a great program and exciting and have an exciting time. Also continue praying for our church prayer request of the three families and uh, just asking the Lord to, to help us make connections with, with folks in our area. Amen. All right. So with that in mind, I'm going to have Miss Melissa uh, play a hymn and, uh, and uh, we can go to prayer and pray over these requests.
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together and to bring our requests to you. Thank you so much for pitying us and, and listening to us and, and hearing us. And thank you so much, Lord, that you uh, give us the assurance that when we ask uh, something according to your will, uh, Lord, that we, we have the assurance that you hear us. And if you hear us, then we know that we have the petition, Lord. And we don't deserve it. We're very sinful and offensive to you as uh, humans, as sinners. But Lord, we, we praise and thank you, Lord, that you listen to listen anyways, and you're very gracious to us. Lord, bless our the rest of the service tonight. Speak to us through your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, you please come down and meet with us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So take our hymn books again. We'll turn to page 294. Sing Stepping in the Light, first, third, and last, 294. I did not get a letter in your box, so forgive me for that. But let's go to Luke chapter 18, uh, verses 1 through 8. We'll read Luke 18, 1 through 8. We'll get right into the Bible study tonight. That'll, uh, Luke 18, 1 through 8. And, uh, all right, verse 1. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming, continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for a chance to, to teach from your word. I ask you, Lord, that you please teach us something from your word. Please challenge our hearts regarding this matter of prayer. I pray, Lord, that you please, uh, Lord, give us victories. I pray that you please let us see your power. Let us, let us see you flexing your muscles and, and showing your power and see, uh, showing us what you can do. Lord, increase our faith. I pray that you please meet with us this evening and teach us something from your word. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit's power and please hide me behind the cross of Jesus. I pray that you please uh, help us to see Jesus tonight and to be challenged, Lord. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've been talking about uh, prayer and going through different, different topics about prayer. 
And uh, this, uh, this week we're going to be talking about impor- importunate praying. Importunate praying. But in review, we, we, a few weeks ago we talked about praying for missionaries. And, and uh, we, uh, we talked about some specific things that we could mention in prayer when we're praying for, for our missionaries. And uh, one of the things that we, pr- we talked about was that we could pray that the word of the Lord would have free course. And that's, uh, that's so needy, is the word of the Lord to have free course. Our missionaries, they're on the front lines of the spiritual battlefield. And uh, that's, that's we, we, it's, God's got to intervene, and they've got to have, the word of God has got to have free course. Also, we said that the word of the Lord would be glorified. And we talked about how, also, how that we should pray that the missionary would be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men and women. There are so many people uh, out in, out in the, the foreign field that have been uh, indoctrinated generation after generation after century after century with uh, false cults and, and, and uh, pagan religions. And these people, when, when Jesus Christ uh, comes to them many times, it's, it's not accepted very readily, and, and there are some very wicked people that will oppose it. We also talked about praying for our missionaries uh, and their personal state of being, their spiritual state of being, their emotional state of being, their physical state of being. Um, many times uh, missionaries go to the foreign field, and a lot of times they can't even drink the water from the tap. They can't even brush their teeth from, for, with the water there. They have to use bottled water or else the, the, the water is just not sanitary, and it will do very, very grave damage to their systems or, or emotionally. Uh, I, I know that the, the first year, year and a little bit uh, that we were in Costa Rica, uh, living there in, in downtown, or pretty much not downtown, but uh, in the city, uh, the, the noise level was just was something we were not accustomed to. And the, a good night's rest, a good peaceful night's rest, was uh, just something that, that, that we, could, we couldn't get, and, and it started affecting our spirit. And uh, uh, you know, our missionaries, they have, to, they have to go through those things and adjust. So we just need to pray, pray for them and also spiritually that, uh, that they'll be able to continue their walk with God and, and stay close to the Lord. We talked about praying for our missionaries. Uh, pray that the missionary would be granted utterance, the words to speak, and also that he would be given a chance to speak and, and that he would be able to uh, speak boldly. Also that he would be able to make known the mysteries of the gospel and that a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, Christ would be given them. We also then went to audacious praying. And, uh, and uh, I asked the question, do, when we pray, do we ever dare to pray for the unprecedented? Have you ever, have you ever in your prayer life, have you ever uh, uh, been so bold? That's, that's, what the kind, that's the kind of prayer that God wants us to pray. He wants us to pray, pray boldly. And it's, uh, I said, it's been said that God's only limitation and condition of prayer is found in the character of the one who prays. Remember what Jesus said? He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. And so God's only limitation and condition of prayer is found in the one doing the praying. I said, number one, under audacious praying, God delights in responding to daring prayers. He, he loves responding to daring prayers. We talked about the Syrophoenician lady, how that she was not an Israelite. She was a foreigner. And yet when she saw Jesus in her neighborhood, she, she, uh, she crossed the lines of ethics and said, I've got to, I've got to, Ask Jesus for this request. I've got a daughter who is tormented, and and Jesus at first, you know, gave her said no to her and said, "Hey, I don't need to cast my the bread to the dogs." And and she said, "Well, even the dogs get a crumb." And what I'm asking you is just a crumb. It's just a little thing. You're you're such a you're such a big God. You're you're so capable. And I believe this is just a small thing for you. And God, Jesus said, "According to your faith, be it unto you." And God delights in those kind of prayers. Number two, God encourages us to ask as freely for the impossible as for the impossible. And the only, the only uh, if we think about our prayers, the only thing uh, to God, all of our difficulties are the same size. They're all smaller than him. And that's, that's an encouraging statement that, that all, of our, all of our problems are smaller than God and God can handle it. And so he encourages us to ask freely for the impossible uh, as, as for the possible. And number three, I said, God wants us to pray audaciously, boldly, and daringly. Pray audaciously, boldly, and daringly. Then we talked about being united in prayer. We, we talked about how that in nature, uh, uh, the, the single, a single capillary of a tree is, is nothing by itself. 
but if you reproduce that capillary and you, and you tie it in with another capillary and you tie it in with another one and another one and you keep doing that over, over the long course of, of a, a, a year or 10 years or five years, you've, you've got a, a formidable tree right there. You've got, you've got a, a, a possibly, a, a, you know, we talk about the redwood forest over in California. The humongous tree has been around for thousands of years and it's just, it's just one single capillary at a time that has grown. And being united in prayer is, is like that with us. It's when we are all in one, of, one accord, when we are united in prayer about, about something, there's strength in numbers. The common factor, uh, the common factor between a, a single capillary and also a single cell of a person, uh, the, the single cell of a person, you multiply that by, by trillions and you get a human body. And the common factor is that alone they are insignificant, but when you unite them, you have, you have great, great, uh, uh, great structures, you have great creatures, you have great things. Now tonight we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, importunate praying, importunate praying. And, and uh, before we get there, uh, I want to uh, just review this little bit about united in prayer i said number one faith is infectious faith is infectious and infection spreads where numbers congregate faith is infectious and both scripture and contemporary experience indicate that there's a cumulative power in united praying and our faith our faith should be like a virus our faith should be like a virus i said number two unbelief thrives more readily in isolation Unbelief thrives more readily in isolation. Only with great difficulty can you start a fire with a single stick. Have you ever tried that? It usually takes two to start a fire. I said, number three, the Lord suggested united praying to intensify our prayer force. It was at a united prayer meeting that the mighty power of Pentecost was unleashed. So the Lord, he suggests that we be united in praying. I said, number four, it was when the believers lifted up their voice to God with one accord that the place was shaken. When they lifted up their voice with one accord, the place was shaken. Acts 4.31 says, when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness whenever they were united in prayer. Number five, I said, it was the prayer of the whole church that secured Peter's release. It says that prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. It was the prayer of the whole church. They were united in prayer. What does Ecclesiastes say? It says a, 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 two, a twofold cord cannot be bro broken or a, two, a twofold cord or threefold cord cannot be broken. And, the, and there's strength in numbers. Number six, the missionary enterprise had its birth in a united prayer meeting of church leaders in Acts 13. If you look at that, you'll see that they were fasting and praying, and they were busy doing that. The missionary enterprise had its birth in a united prayer meeting. And tonight, we're going to talk about importunate praying. If you have your Bibles, uh, if you could turn over to Luke 11, I want to read you another little parable, another little story, and, and uh, get into the Bible study this evening. Luke chapter 11 verse 1. Luke 11, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth, give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as for we also... Forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot arise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not arise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity. He will arise and give him as many as he needeth. And the Lord, he wants us to, to pray with importunity. Pray with importunity. What does importunity mean? 
There's a blank. Uh, what does importunate mean? There's a blank on your, on your, uh, on your sheet. It says, uh, it, the word importunate means shameless persistence. Shameless persistence. Shameless persistence. Our Lord Jesus taught his disciples using two methods. He used contrast and he used comparison. These two stories do not tell us that our God is a stingy neighbor who begrudgingly stirs himself from sleep to give us what he wants, or does it say that our God is an uncaring judge that reluctantly doles out justice just to keep himself from going insane because we won't stop asking? No, God here is illustrating to us one of the secrets of prevailing prayer. Prevailing prayer. Think about this. If an ungenerous neighbor can, in the end, be coerced by a friend's shameless persistence into granting his request, how much more will our Heavenly Father give us what we need when we ask him importunately? How much more? He wants to give us those things. If an unjust judge can be badgered into giving justice to a wronged widow simply because she wearied him with her appeals, how much more will God respond to the urgent cry of his children? God wants us to know that. He wants us to pray like that. He wants us to be shamelessly persistent. Sometimes we, sometimes we, we judge God according to if, if we were in God's shoes. You remember when your kids, when they were younger, Brother Leonard, myself, but when your kids were younger, and they would ask, or, or they would ask for something, Daddy, can I have this? Daddy, can I have this? Daddy, can I? And they were very importunate. And Daddy, can I have this? Daddy, and, 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 how, and how, would, how would you, uh, would you get happier every time they asked? W w would you, honestly? Oh, would you please bug me again with that question? Would you please ask me again? I am loving hearing it for the hundredth time that I've said no to you. And sometimes we, when we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray, we think that we're bugging God, but God's not like that. God's not like that. He, he enjoys hearing it. You know, that's, that's, you know, we're humans. We, we, we have that sin nature and, and, and we can get irritated. But God does not. He loves to hear us. And so that's what, that's what he's trying to tell us is, hey, just keep praying. Just keep praying. I like hearing you talk. I like hearing you talk to me. So number one, number one, half-hearted asking comes away empty-handed. Half-hearted asking comes away empty-handed. God wants you to put your whole heart into your request. Don't think that when you pray to God and you've asked him for the 1,100th millionth time uh, for, this one, for this thing that he just keeps stirring your heart about and stirring your heart about, that he's getting irritated with you. No, he, he wants you to continue praying. He wants you to continue praying. He wants you to put your whole heart into your request. What does Psalms 119.2 say? It says, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. Psalms uh, verse 10 says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Verse 145 says, I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. Hebrews 11:6 6, it says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. What's the definition of diligent? I think it's pretty much akin to importunate, shameless persistence. Just continuing, continuing. God does not get irritated when we pray and pray for the same thing over and over again. 1 John 5, 14, it says, This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition. And so he says, he says don't ask half-heartedly, because half-hearted asking comes away empty-handed. Number two, number two, lukewarmness in prayer as in everything else, is revolting to God. Lukewarmness in prayer, as in everything else, is revolting to God. Let's, let's uh, go to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> Lukewarmness in prayer, as in everything else, is revolting to God. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15, it says, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, 
and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. God cannot stand lukewarm anything. He's, he's, he's like, if you're going to be, if you're going to either be hot for me or be cold for me, against me, whatever, but don't be lukewarm. And so he says in your prayer, don't be lukewarm either. Be fervent. Believe. Be diligent. Why are God's people lukewarm in their prayers? Look at verse 17. Maybe it's because it says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. It's funny how urgent we become when our needs become more pressing. Isn't that interesting? When our needs become more pressing, then we start getting motivated to pray. But what about the needs of the world? Aren't their needs pressing? It's, 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 it's sadly that I, I have to admit the same. I'm guilty just like anybody else would be. Anybody else? It's, it's, we, we, we become more urgent when our needs become more pressing. Look at what God commanded this church to do. Look at verse 18 here in Revelation 3. It says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness, nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. What was he counseling them to do? He was saying to them, I don't want you to be lukewarm in your prayers. I want you to be fervent in your prayers and hot in your prayers. Uh, d don't judge me like you, like, it, like as, as if I were you. Because I don't get irritated when you, when you continually pray importunately. And you pray and pray and pray. Pray again. But we become lukewarm. Why? Because maybe, maybe it's because, uh, because we're like this church. So how do we get out of that? He says to them, in verse 18, he says, Buy from God gold tried in the fire. That's what he counseled them to do. He says, buy gold tried in the fire. Why? So that they would be rich in God's opinion. So that they would be rich just because we have houses and lands and, and possessions. That does, that's not... That's not uh, that earthly riches will burn up. But what are the true riches? What are true riches? Luke 16 says, And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the man of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you've not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is, is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. God does not want us to be lukewarm in our prayer life. He wants us to be fervent. He, he, he wants us to be hot for him. He wants us to seek diligently. He wants us to, to believe in him. He doesn't want us to think that but I, by our importunate praying, and, and praying, oh, I've been praying for this for how many years? That, that's, that's a blessing. I, I remember the story, uh, I believe it was uh, George Mueller that was, praying for, that was praying for five of his friends to be saved. Five of his friends in a year or so, a couple of them got saved. About five or so year, years later, uh, uh, another one of them got saved. About 15 years later, another one of them got saved. And 42 years later, that fifth one still wasn't saved. George Mueller dies. And shortly after his death, the man gets saved. Amen. For 42 years, he prayed and prayed and prayed. And pray, God never gets tired of that. God never gets tired of that. If we follow this counsel regarding what true riches are and work to acquire them, we will not be lukewarm in our prayers. If we, if, if we, will, if we will say, I am, going to, I am going to strive after the true riches. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be fervent in my prayer for the true riches. He also said, he said, buy white raiment. Buy white raiment. So, that, so they would be truly clothed by God's standard, not man. Sadly, many Christians, we think of ourselves more hotly than we ought to think. Right. We, we say, I don't smoke, I don't chew, I don't run with those that do, I must be a good Christian. 
And, and, and yet, we, yet we're, 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 we're like Pharisees. We, we're, we, 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 we have this attitude that we're better than people. And, and God says, no, you buy white raiment, you be clean of my eyes. You be clean of my eyes. He says, buy white raiment so they would be truly clothed by God's standards, so that they would be unashamed. He wanted them to have a pure, unspotted testimony before God and man. Blameless. He wanted to have them to have a pure, unspotted testimony. He wanted the world to be able to tell and know, there goes the Christian. There goes one of my children. That's what God desires more than anything. He needs friends. He needs people who will take his word, who will live it to, to, to the, to, to, as best as they can and, and live among the world and let the world see, hey, there goes the Christian. Not for pride's sake, but for his glory's sake. He says, buy white raiment. When you see your every move as a possible stepping stone or a stumbling block to others, it will change how you live your Christian life. When you analyze your every move and, and, and you ask yourself, will this, how, how, how will this affect my testimony? How will this affect my, me representing my creator? And that's how we have to look at everything. You'll soon realize that, you can't, that your prayer life, prayer life, when you desire to live this way, when you, ever, when you look at everything, am I going to be a stepping stone or a stumbling block? You'll soon realize that your prayer life cannot be lukewarm. It cannot be. It cannot be middle of the road. It ha- Lord, I've got to have your help. I've got to have your help. I do not want to lead people astray. And so he says, he says to them, buy gold. Concentrate on true riches. Don't be lukewarm. Buy white raiment. Have a spotless testimony. Finally, he says, buy ISAV. Buy ISAV. ISAV is ointment for the eyes. It's, it's a healing balm for the eyes. Why? Why did he say buy ISAV? So that they could see as God sees. So that they could see as God sees. See, man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. God is able to discern spirits. And God wants us to be able to see those in, in that light. He wants us to, to see life through the lens of eternity. How is it going to last in eternity? How, how, how is this going to really matter when, when time is done? And that's how he wants us to see. And he says, buy ISAF. I said, number one, half-hearted asking comes away empty-handed. Number two, lukewarmness in prayer, as in everything else, is revolting to God. I said, and number three, shameless persistence. An urgency which will not be denied returns with a desired petition in its hands. Shameless persistence. In Luke eleven eight. Shameless persistence got an unlimited supply of bread from his supplying friend because he was shamelessly persistent. He, was, he went first asking. When he, when he first asked, he was met with a curt refusal. Then, then he went again, and, and he was met with denial. And then he went again, and he was met with supplying. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to ask. He wants us to seek. He wants us to knock. This, in, in chapter 18, the shameless persistence uh, of this widow secured for her the vindication and redress of grievances that she, long, that she had longed for, that she had sought for for many years without any, without any help. It's, 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 it says, uh, Jesus said, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to be importunate. He wants us to, 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 to keep praying and keep praying and, 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 and not judge him like how we would react. Here's some observations. Number one, God may not always give at first asking because he has something. In, God may not always give at first asking because he has something important to teach us as we call upon him day and night. God wants, my, my pastor growing up, he, he said many times, uh, God doesn't answer your prayer the first and second and third time, and you know, maybe 10 or 50 or 100 times, because he knows, he knows us. He knows that, that, that how many times have we, have, we, have we been urgent in prayer, and urgent in prayer, and we went to God in prayer, and, and as soon as the answer to prayer came, then, then we said, okay, I'll see you later, God, and we checked out. And he's like, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying the conversation. So I, I, I'm afraid to give it to you, because then I, I just get silence. 
God may not always give at first asking because he has something important to teach us as we call upon him day and night. Number two, we, must, we may just need to ask and seek and knock to show God how serious we are in this matter. To show God how serious we are in this matter. God knows us better than we know ourselves. He studies us. He, he knows our character, who we are in private, who we are when nobody else is watching. He knows us. And so he, 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 he says, ask, seek, knock, enjoy this time. You see, God is not a, a genie where we just rub the lamp and poof, you want me to do the genie again, right? Remember that day? <laughs> Where you rub the lamp and the genie comes out. God is, God is not just, just a genie for us. And then, then we go about our merry way. No, he wants, to, he wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. I love that song, I come to the garden alone. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And that's what he enjoys. He wants us to ask. He wants us to seek. He wants us to knock because he wants to know how serious are we. How serious are we? are we? Are we just coming to him to get something out of him or are we coming to spend time with him? And number three, God is not impatient of our constant coming to him and asking and he will respond to our importunity. God is not impatient of our constant coming to him and, he, and asking and he will respond to our importunity. What a loving Heavenly Father we have. One of the things that I, I love in the Bible that, 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 uh, that, that the, the Word of God says in Psalms, it says that He pities us as little children. Amen. He pities us as little children. And I, I, it, makes me, it makes me think of, of a mother and, and her little one trips and falls and, and, or, or, or does something and is hurt and is crying and is, and is broken hearted and that mother just, just takes that little one up in, their arm, in her arms and, and just consoles and comforts. And that's our Heavenly Father to us. It doesn't matter how many years this physical body has. We should always desire to be coddled in our Father's arms. Amen? Amen? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if you're, you're 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. You, you, your heart's desire should be, Lord, wrap me up in your arms. I just want to sit in your lap. I, I, I just, I just want to be close to you. He's not impatient with us. He's not impatient with us. He wants us to constantly come to him and ask him. He wants us to prevail in prayer. And he enjoys that time. He doesn't get impatient. He doesn't reprimand us because we, we pray and we, we pray again and we pray again, even if it's forgiveness. Can you believe that? Even if it's forgiveness, even if it's, it's where he, he, it's something wrong that we've done and we've done it how many times? He's, he says, just come, just come. Talk to me about it. Talk to me about it. Importunate praying. That's how he wants us to pray. He wants us to pray importunately. He wants us to, to, to understand that we're always welcome. We're always welcome at His feet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank You and praise You, Lord, for a chance to preach Your Word. I ask You, Lord, to please teach us something from the Word of God. Help us, Lord, to, to see this. And Lord, if, if there's something, a, a matter in our heart that we've been praying about and, and seeking Your face about, I pray, Lord, that You please... Help us, Lord, to stay faithful and be consistent. Help us, Lord, to, to not get discouraged and get disheartened. Help us not to listen to Satan and as he just tries to discourage us from, from praying again and, and talking to you and trying to get us to think that you don't listen to our prayers and you don't answer prayers. Yes, you do, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you please... Help us, Lord, to be faithful. Help us, Lord. Jesus, you said when you return to the earth, will you find faith on the earth? I beg you, Lord, that in our generation, Lord, help us to be faithful so that that question that you asked your disciples, will I find faith on the earth? Lord, help us to be able to say yes. Yes, Jesus it sounded like you were doubtful. 
Lord, help us to, to be faithful into the end. Those that want to please God, they've got to have faith that he, that he is and He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Help us, Lord, to be diligent. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I'm going to ask Miss Melissa to play a hymn of invitation. Let's take this time to talk to the Lord and, and do business with Him. In our, open our song question number 139 I know whom I have believed number 139 let's all stand please and we'll sing the first and last verse of number 139 number 139 I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known nor why But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor is if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Amen. Let's bow for prayer, and it will be dismissed. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for a chance to come to church. I pray, Lord, that you please challenge our prayer lives. I pray, Lord, that you please help us not to get discouraged. Or some, some of those uh, prayer requests, Lord, it just, we've just got to pray it through. I pray, Lord, that you please encourage our hearts. I pray, Lord, that you please give us, give us these prayer requests that we can labor in prayer, we can, and we can prevail and. Lord, we can experience that joy of a, of a sweet victory, Amen. of a long, drawn-out prayer request. I pray, Lord, you please bless our folks as they head to their houses. I pray that you please give them safety, watch over them, and bring, this, bring us all back safely on Sunday. I pray, Lord, please uh, bless them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.